Kramer's rule, so, so this Kramer dude here is not related to any modern era TV series. Uh, if I remember correctly, he's a Swiss mathematician from the 18th century, but I'm not even completely sure about that. Okay, so what is Kramer's rule? Um, let AX equals B be a system of equations. of linear equations, and there's going to be an assumption here that it's an n by n system, meaning the dimension of uh, the number of variables and the number of equations are the same, okay? A system of equations with n uh, equations, or let's write a system of n equations with n uh, unknowns or variables. Unknowns. Okay, so that means that A is an n by n matrix. Okay, and we know that if A, if the determinant of A is not zero, then there's a unique solution. That was two of the six equivalent statements that we had, right? If the determinant of A is not zero, then the rank of A is full, A is invertible, right? And one of the other ones, I don't remember which number was, that AX equals B has a solution for every B. Do you agree? Okay, so if, if the determinant of A is not zero, then the system has a unique solution. I'm missing a single word in every line. I have to press enter. Good? Now, what, I, what, what this Kramer's rule business is about is a way of writing, the, writing the, the solution explicitly in terms of determinants. Okay? And um, we already know several ways of solving such systems. Kramer's rule is not necessarily easier or shorter than, for example, taking the, the matrix A, writing B along sided, doing row operations. We know that method. Another method that we mentioned is finding A inverse and then multiplying both sides by A inverse, you get X equals A inverse B, right? That's another way of solving. The work there is hidden in finding A inverse, right? So there's kind of a preservation law, just like in physics here, it's a preservation of difficulty and it, it passes along the different methods, and here's another one, okay? So, here is yet another method for solving. And the, the advantage of it is that we can write a formula for x, write the solution explicitly, okay? And, well, when we wrote x equals a inverse b, that was also explicitly, and now we even know a formula for a inverse in terms of the adjugate matrix, so it's yet another method. Okay. So here is another method for solving. So, let's take a new board. Denote, denote by d sub i, i ranges from 1 to n, so we're going to have n such di's. By di, the determinant of the matrix obtained from A from FROB, ooh, from a by, I'm going to take A, A is an n by n matrix, I'm going to cross out its ith column, and instead I'm going to write there the vector B, the solution vector, okay? Replace the ith column of A with B, the solution vector. Take the determinant of that, that's going to be DI. 
So the determinant of the matrix obtained from A by replacing the ith column of A by replacing the ith column of A with B. Good? So in each of these you replace the relevant, the ith column with B and calculate determinant. Okay? So how many determinants do I need to calculate here? N determinants, each of which is an n by n determinant. That's, that's some work. There's some work there. Okay. And the theorem is, the theorem is that if the determinant of A is not zero, then uh, the solution of, and it's a unique solution, it's the solution, right? The solution of AX equals B is X1 is going to be this D1 divided by the determinant. X2 is going to be D2 divided by the determinant. Okay, D1 is a number, right? It's an n by n determinant. The determinant of A is again a number, a non-zero one. And therefore, this is just a quotient of two numbers. It's a number. Okay? And we have n of them, and together they form the solution. This is Kramer's rule. Good? I'm not going to prove this. I am going to do a short example, just so we get the hang of it and see that there's work involved. Okay? So even in a 3x3 three three example, how many 3x3 three three determinants am I going to need to calculate? 27. Hmm? 27. No. Oh my. N by N, N times. No, a 3x3 three three determinant, I'm going to need to calculate the determinant itself, that's 1, and then 3 more, D1, D2, and D3. That's it, 4. Okay, 20s. <laughs> Calm down. Okay, good. So let's do this uh, example. So here's the system. Here's the system. Minus 2x1 plus 3x2 minus x3 equals 1. Uh, x1 plus 2x2 minus x3 equals 4. And minus 2x1 minus x2 plus x3 equals negative 3. This is an easy system. You can, in fact, solve it by your uh, very good old high school methods of substituting, uh, right? Solving the first equation for x3, for example, substituting into the other two and a couple more rows and you're done, right? So this is what we're going to do is obviously not the shortest uh, way of solving this, but nevertheless, so what is A, the coefficient matrix here, is negative 2, 3, negative 1, uh, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, 1, right? This is A. Uh, B is the vector 1, 4, negative 3. Right? And now we need to calculate four things. We need to calculate the determinant of A. Right? And I'm not going to calculate it. You can do it. It ends up being negative 2. We know how to calculate a 3 by 3 determinant. Okay? And now we need to find D1, D2, and D3. So what is D1? Let me write it. D1 is taking A replacing the first column of A by B. So instead of the first column, I'm going to have B here, 1, 4, negative 3, and then the other two columns are the original ones from A. Do you agree that this is D1, the determinant of this matrix? Okay, and what you get, what you get again, I'm not going to calculate determinants, what was D1, negative 4, the point is that you should see here one, two, and two more, three by three determinants. 
that's some work. Okay. D2, D2 is again, take your original A, replace the second column by B. So I get negative 2, 1, negative 2, and then B, 1, 4, negative 3, and then back to the original A, negative 1, 1, 1. Okay, the determinant turns out to be negative 6. And finally, D3 equals the determinant of the two original columns of A. And then the third column replaced with B. And what you get here is negative 8. Okay? And now once we have this, all this data, our solution, according to the theorem, is, so I didn't leave enough space. Um, let, uh, uh, let's write it here. Do we have enough space here? Yeah. X is going to be, it's going to be a vector with three entries. a vector with three entries. The first entry is D1 divided by the determinant of the original A. Negative 4 divided by negative 2, 2. The second entry is D2 divided by the determinant of A, negative 6 divided by negative 2, 3. And the third entry is negative 8 divided by negative 2, 4. This is the unique solution to this system. You can, of course, verify it or solve it in any of the other three ways we mentioned or any other way. Okay? Questions on Kramer's rule? Good? Okay, so if, if you're fond of determinants, if that's what you enjoy doing, if that's your therapy, here's a way of solving systems of equations where all you need to do is calculate determinants. When they're big systems, they're big determinants. And lots of them. Okay, good? Okay, so this, in fact, concludes our discussion of invertible matrices and determinants and uh, leads us to our next topic, which is our next big topic in this course, which is linear transformations or linear maps. So that's coming up next.